What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we are talking about whey protein. Does it give you acne? But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. All right, so this comes up because there was a new, wait for it, wait for it, human randomized control trial examining whey protein supplementation and the incidence of acne. For those who may not be familiar, many people, I, would, I wanna say mostly of the plant-based persuasion and dermatologists have raised concerns about the impact of dairy on acne. Whey protein and dairy can increase insulin-like growth factor. Insulin-like growth factor is important for pimple growth. And so we wanna avoid dairy, we wanna avoid whey protein. And then they also tie this together with some epidemiological data. They're actually doing kind of what the carnivore and, and keto folk do with seed oils, which is <gasps> look at this epidemiology and look at these mechanisms and then they draw a straight line. And as we know, mechanisms do not mean the same thing as outcomes, as if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know this. And epidemiology is not the same thing as causation. And that is why we do human randomized control trials to see if things actually make a difference. Why is that important? Why is the, the randomization important? Let's just do a brief rundown real quick for you guys to catch up to speed if you haven't been there. One of the reasons I really harp on human randomized control trials is because mechanisms or biochemical pathways that would be like, well, whey protein increases IGF-1. IGF-1 is important for pimple formation and growth, and therefore whey protein causes pimple formation and growth. Maybe, but biochemical pathways, outcomes like pimple growth and formation, that's an outcome, physiological outcome, are the summation of hundreds, if not thousands of different biochemical pathways. A great example of this is aspirin is known as an anti-clotting drug. It thins the blood. It reduces blood clot formation, but it actually has biochemical pathways that are procoagulant that it also activates. But the net, the outcome, is that aspirin is an anticoagulant. What do we care about? Do we care about that it activates a few of these procoagulant properties? Should we tell people, no, don't take it because it activates those? Or do we care about that overall it is an anticoagulant? No, you care about overall, right? That's like saying, this mutual fund, you don't want to invest in that because look, it has these two stocks in there that are down by 30%. Meanwhile, they're not telling you that overall the mutual fund is up by 20%. What do you care about? Do you care about the two stocks out of 200 that are down a little bit, or do you care about that overall the mutual fund is killing it? So we've set the stage. Now, human randomized control trials are useful because unlike epidemiology, there's actually a treatment and you have to randomize people. Because for example, let's say we brought people in and said, okay, do you wanna be in the whey protein group or the non-whey protein group? Maybe people who choose a certain group are actually more likely to develop pimples because of some other confounding variable. Now, when you randomize them, you can assume that any kind of inherent characteristics that might drive confounding variables will be randomly and equally distributed across the groups. And that means that whatever outcome you're looking for is gonna be influenced by your treatment rather than these confounding variables. In this study, it was actually very high quality because they did what's called double blind placebo controlled, meaning they just didn't give people whey protein versus nothing. They gave people whey protein and then they gave people in the other group a placebo. The people getting the whey protein and the placebo did not know which one they were getting. But double blind also means the researchers didn't know which ones they were giving them either. So usually you have an independent third party that comes in that does this double blinding. So the researchers didn't know who was getting whey protein and who wasn't. So the people getting the whey protein or not couldn't be influenced psychologically and behaviorally by what they were getting because they didn't know. And the researchers couldn't influence them because they didn't know what they were getting either. Only when they got all the data back and it was done, did they become unblinded and they could see which group was which and what happened. For six months, 20 year old men with a history of some acne got either whey protein, 30 grams per day, or a placebo. And they also encouraged them to minimize their intake of dairy. Okay, so overall, so there wasn't a bunch of confounding. They measured like pimple formation, like how many pimples they had and some other variables over six months. And what they found by the end of it was there was no difference between the two groups. And in fact, at least based on the raw data, the whey protein actually had slightly better outcomes, but it wasn't statistically significant, so it doesn't really matter. This is why it's important to do human randomized control trials because you can have mechanisms, you can have epidemiology, but until you actually look 
at what you care about, you don't know. This is just one study, so we don't wanna to make too much about it, but it is the most highly controlled study that I'm aware of examining this. And it was for six months, which should be enough time to see differences in the incidence of pimples. Based on this data, my take home is whey protein probably doesn't influence acne and you probably don't have too much to worry about. Now I know people will come out and say, well I took whey protein and my acne did this. Okay, but whey protein was the only thing you changed during that time. Your stress levels didn't change. Your sleep levels didn't change. You didn't make any other dietary changes. You didn't make any changes to your exercise. You didn't add anything into your life. This is why we do human randomized control trials because we can isolate variables as opposed to just having one person who thinks they changed one thing who probably changed a bunch of things. I'm not ready to say that whey protein absolutely does not cause acne, but so far the best evidence on the subject suggests that whey protein does not cause acne. If you guys like this stuff, if you like it when I yell human randomized control trials, pick up your human randomized control trials t-shirt. You can get it at the link in the description and I will catch you guys next week.